is Julie Ann Link, and welcome to the Music Link. This week on the Let's Link project, I'd like to welcome the Associate Principal Bassoonist of the Music Collegium Ventator in Switzerland, Valeria Kurti. Valeria, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thank you. Hi from Switzerland. For everyone watching, Valeria and I met about 10 years ago while we were studying at the Zürcher Hochschule der Künste in Switzerland. Valeria, please share an overview of who you are and what you do as a professional musician. Hi guys. So um, as Julie said, I am a Swiss bassoon player. Uh, I'm 26 years old and play now since three years uh, in Winterthur in this orchestra, the Musik Collegium Winterthur, um, which is a small chamber or eh, a small symphony orchestra. So not a chamber orchestra, but not a big symphony orchestra, so it's in between. Um, I grew up in Switzerland, in near to Zurich, where then I studied with Julie. And afterwards I studied in Salzburg with Marco Postingel. And now, parallel to my work, I study in Basel with Sergio Azzolini. Yeah, and yeah, this is like uh, a bit an overview of my mm. work. Valeria, how did you first get introduced to music and the bassoon? Uh, actually, in Switzerland, it's normal that every year the music schools open their doors and the children can get in and try all the instruments. And at that time, I was six years old and I went um, to one of these music schools and there I, I saw the bassoon and actually I was so fascinated of this instrument that I just tried it out and I didn't leave it. I was the whole afternoon there trying out different bassoons, small bassoons and everything. So I love this instrument. And then I started three years later and when mm. I was nine years old. But it, I think it was love at first sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do any of your family members play music or have musical backgrounds? Uh, actually, my grandma played violin, but just as a hobby, so she wasn't a professional musician. And my big sister then studied violin and is now a violin teacher in Zurich. Wow. Yeah. Could you share more about your music studies and where you're studying now? Yeah, so I started my studies in Zurich with, no, before, oh, of course, I, I um, started at nine years old, neck in a music school. And then when I was 14 years old, I could enter a special program for young talents where I um, was in a college mm -hmm. and could study um, in Zurich at this time with Matthias Ratz um, until I was uh, 20 years old. I was with him, so six years. Um, it was a great time. I learned so much of him. And mm. then I went to Salzburg to study with Marco Postingel, where I did my master's degree two years. And now I'm really happy to be um, studying with Sergio Azzolini now since one year and a half. Mm. Yeah. Really great. How have you found your music teachers have influenced you and your playing? Uh, yeah, this is funny because actually um, some people who see me play and who know um, my previous teachers, they see some some things of them in me now. Um, for, for example, Matthias Ratz, um, I am very grateful to him, to all the technical skills he, he gave me. So in, I, I practiced a lot as well in this time and these days, I think your whole life, what you, what you learn as a teenager. Mm. So I can, I can, or people can see a bit of him in me, how I, how I stand as well and how I, I am on the, on the stage. And um, Sergio Azzolini gave me now, like I, I have the impression he, he made the flower rise, or <laughs> I don't know if you think he like opened me. He gave me um, confidence and he changed my sound so that I finally really can I like my sound. Yeah, 
Could you share any realizations or things you've learned about the music industry while studying and working professionally? Yeah, I've, I've learned that um, practicing is important. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you need a lot of discipline to really get somewhere in, in music. And I think as well to then finally really be able to enjoy your performance on stage when mm. you have no anxiety and stuff. So this I've learned and I've learned that music business is quite tough, actually mm. tougher than I, I've expected because um, in the beginning I was in Switzerland, uh, one of the only bassoon players when I was a child. So I thought, ah, oh, there are not many bassoon players. Ah, oh, it's easy, nice. I can do some competitions. But then when I grew older and started to do auditions internationally, mm. I just, there's yeah, a lot of competition, mm -hmm. which yeah, I didn't expect of, of, mm -hmm. of our industry. Mm -hmm. Did you ever consider changing careers outside of music? Um, actually, I have many interests, but I've never really considered doing something else. Uh, except I, I once considered um, to study singing and become an opera singer because this would be one of, or this is maybe my my dream. Mm. But then I I stayed with the bassoon anyway, and I'm happy now because I think the the opera singing world is quite tough, <laughs> and mm. so I'm happy to play in an orchestra and to live in one in one place and not to, to have to travel all the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Could you tell me more about your chamber music playing? Uh, yes, so um, I love chamber music. It's what I, I really like to do. But actually, I, I, I mean, with the bassoon, it's difficult. It's not like the string players who can play string mm. quartet. Uh, we could do woodwind quintets, but I've ne I was never so fond of this particular. Mm. It wasn't for me, I think. So um, I created a trio now with harp and flute. And there are not many original pieces, but there are some mm. from Olivet, for example, Pastoral de Noël, which is one. And then from some different, not so known composer we found as well. Um, some great pieces actually and um, I like this trio because I, I I play with two good friends of mine as well um, which I've met as well in Zurich at the um, Hochschule der Künste um, and it's really nice to to make music with with friends as well mm -hmm. and I think it, it works well the sounds of harp flute and bassoon it's really a nice mixture yeah, and my trio is called Trio Lusinia. <laughs> hmm. Could you share more about your orchestra career? Yes, so um, I tried, in, in the beginning, I tried to get into youth orchestras like the Gustav Mahler Youth Orchestra and the Schleswig-Holstein Music Academy. And so I, I managed to get into these two youth orchestras and I was always doing many auditions and then I won a trial in the RSNO, Royal Scottish National Orchestra, and I could play there some projects. And this opened me uh, the doors to, I, I mean, in the end, I didn't get the job back then, but it opened me some doors to the UK. And then actually I was able to play in many orchestras there. I was, I had a trial in, City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra, where I played during two years as a principal bassoon for some projects. And this was a really great time because I was able to play in, in a big symphony orchestra and playing a big bassoon solos like Alborada del Gracioso mm. or just a Kovish symphonies. So this was a really nice experience. Mm. And I played as well as a... Um, as a guest principal in Scottish Chamber Orchestra and in the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, mm. which was in London. Yeah. And then I, I got my job here in Winterthur, um, where I did before the academy. It's like a, where, where when you're young, you can learn to 
and playing professional orchestras. And so then I got my job here three years ago and I, I'm still here and happy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any favorite concert experiences that you could share about? Mm, yes, I have one, but I wasn't on stage actually. I was listening. And it, this was a concert of Sergio Azzolini mm -hmm. uh, in Zurich. And I just remember that I was sitting in like the second row or something. And he played and he, he looked in, in the audience and he really um, like told the story. And this was for me really special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about a memorable audition experience or competition experience. Um, yeah, a competition experience. I have a nice one. Uh, and I was in the IDRS Young Artist Competition back in 2015. And I was lucky because this year the IDRS conference was in Tokyo, which then led me to Tokyo. So just the city was amazing. And anyway, so to go, it was really new for me to, to it was, I think, the first international competition and then in Tokyo and so far away. And then I managed to, yeah, I was happy with my performance. I, I studied a lot before and then I, I got the first prize. So wow. yeah, I was really proud and, and still happy and look back in a, in a very good way. Mm. Yeah. And it's good, like good uh, audition experiences. I, I, I don't like auditions so much. So <laughs> I don't really have memorable audition experiences. <laughs> it's always a lot of stress for me. Mm -hmm. It kind of leads into how do you cope with music performance anxiety? <laughs> yeah, as I said before, I I think for me the key is to really study a lot. Mm. Uh, I need to know the piece. I not just my part. I need to know the harmonies, and I actually I need to know every details, every special moment in the piano part or in the orchestral part. And um, when I feel really so secure when I have played it a lot as well in front of some other musicians and some friends then I, I really I think I have the confidence to just enjoy uh -huh. so I, in back in November I, I played Rossini the Sun Concerto with the orchestra and Winterthur and um, with live stream and everything so this was something big for me um, and yeah then I really prepared like this so just I mm -hmm. studied a lot with piano and I played played it a lot through and mm. so this is how I manage but I think everybody's different and every yeah people need some different things. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever experienced any music related injuries? Yes I have actually I <laughs> quite a lot mm. I, I think as well the bassoon maybe isn't like the most natural position like Mm -hmm. but I, I've had a long time to really find the balance and so yeah my injuries were at, in, in my left hand mm -hmm. uh, because I I was here so tense that actually the muscle um, pressed on the nerve yes. of my hand and so I for like one month I couldn't move anything wow. else. This was quite, and in the end, actually, it was um, I'm happy to finally talk about it. I never really <laughs> talk about this. I, I was 17, so really, like in an age where I wanted really to start my career and, and yes. sing. Um, and actually, it was just that here this muscle was so tense. I, I just mm -hmm. need now to do a lot of this this movement because uh -huh. when you play the tune, it's often like like here you, you get short this muscle. Mm -hmm. so I can just tell, it's like for everybody, yeah. <laughs> if you play the tune, do lots of this kind of movement, go swimming or something, because yeah, better to prevent these kind of injuries, I think. Mm. Tell me about your reed making style and techniques. Okay, so my reed making style is not so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really think I'm, I mean, I, I tried a lot. But I don't think that I I'm re I have the character making good reads because I'm quite um, 
like chaotic and mm. it's not really i don't have so the, the patient i don't have so much patience so i'm quite impatient and, and i i like to do things like fast and uh, so um in the moment i i'm not making reads because actually my the machines i have mm -hmm. here at yeah, so they they need to be to get fixed again, but they will come back now in one week, I think. But then I told myself now it's a new year and I will try again to to read. Yeah. What are important skills that you've learned through music that apply to everyday life? Mm. I think it is confident mm -hmm. thing um, to be confident. I, I, I feel when I, I'm confident playing music, I'm more confident in the life as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the sensitivity, like I, I like it that sometimes in the music you can be very sensitive and and I think to while you are playing music, you need to be very open and very vulnerable as well and so mm -hmm. i think this is nice quality as well in the life mm -hmm. be open and not to be fake actually yeah this is it uh, when you play music and you want to touch people you cannot be fake because otherwise you don't touch it and so i think this is a quality which i like as well to have in the in the in the life and as me as a person mm -hmm. not to try to want to be somebody who i am not but to show everybody who I am, yeah. Is there any advice that you can share to musicians just starting out their music careers? Um, yeah, I think the most important thing is always to find your motivation. Um, and if, if you ever feel that maybe some teacher, this is, doesn't work because we are all different. We all need maybe different kind of things. So don't hesitate, but find your own way. Mm. And take what you need, what you feel that you need, I think. And study a lot. <laughs> yeah. Great advice. Who do you think I should interview next? Um, I can give you two names. I have a very special friend. Um, her name is Michaela Spakova. Mm. She's a Czech bassoon player and she was in the semi-finals in the ARD competition in Munich wow. and in the Lyric competition as well. And I think she's a really great person and you should maybe interview her. Oh. And the second name is uh, Gordon Fantini, an Italian bassoon player. Wow. And he's really, really nice and, and, and a great person. He studied as well um, with Sergio Azzolini and is now the principal bassoon in the Belgium National Orchestra. Wow. I'd love to reach out to them. Thank you, Valeria. Hmm. Thank you, Julie. Thank you so much for this interview today, Valeria. It's wonderful to get a glimpse into your life and career as a professional musician. Thank you. <laughs> For everyone tuning in, keep an eye out for new videos with great bassoon guests every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. On the Let's Link project, every guest interviewed here is hosting a free online Zoom panel discussion the following Sunday, Central Standard Time, and you can register for Valeria's session on the Music Link website. Please like, comment, and share any questions or feedback in the section below, and subscribe to this channel for new videos every week. Check out the Music Link Instagram and Facebook pages for more information too. Check out Valeria's Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube pages at Valeria and Valeria Curti. The Music Link is a New Zealand-based online resource for people to share, learn, and connect. Thank you for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video.